So, Mary, can, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? I, I believe she, you've been on before with Brayden. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about yourself and what you do? Yeah, so I am the um, president and CEO of Mosaic Media. We are a global full-service paid media agency. So we do anything that falls under the paid media umbrella, um, traditional, social, Google, Amazon, the whole nine yards, and then uh, programmatic as well. So I've been in media for 25 years now. I started when I was really young, and now I feel like the old lady in the room at times, you know, trying to share my wisdom on marketing and media, and it's um, it's a lot of fun. Very cool. That's uh, 25 years. I'm sure media yeah. has changed a lot with, you know, you you went through the whole internet shift and all that, and wow. When I think about started it. my career, <laughs> yeah, when I started my career, you only had a few options. You had TV, print, radio, outdoor. That's pretty much it. Um, I the first era of digital where you would actually call a website to then get placed on the website, and that's what you did to actually have your ad air. Uh, and then from there, you would do um, you know you'd have you'd have to ask for an RFP and a rate request and all the above and put a plan together that way. Now we have so many channels and so many opportunities for advertisers. Wow, I just want to touch on that real quick. Just what did you? How did you start? That's it. Just one quick question. How did you start in media? Well, it's not a quick question. That's a pretty loaded question. <laughs> can, can, we, can we just get like a <laughs> two-minute synopsis of it? Yes. Yeah, so I actually started actually as a graphic designer that then went into television. Cool. That's how I started. And then uh, from there, and I worked my way through college. And from there, fell in love with actually the statistical data of economics and media together and marketing together. And the rest is history of how I'm in media. That's awesome. Very yeah. cool. So we actually, we recorded a more or less a part one <laughs> several months yeah. ago and we got super nerdy and I loved it. It was <laughs> It was great. So a lot of common issues with, uh, I mean, Mark, just advertising in general is like nobody knows how to put together an audience. So, right. you know, how, how can we better understand and pinpoint an ideal customer profile? If we want an example, we can use a landscape company. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So really true. The true, true thing is, so when I started in media, we looked at just broad demographics. We would always start every plan with um, what is your demographic? That would be adults 18 to 54, which the 18 year old and the 54 year old, even then that was a far fetched, but that's why we start. And that's how we would build a plan. And we would look and say, okay, where's everybody there in the target audience and where, which channels do I go to? Which radio stations are the best? Which TV stations are the best? That's how I'm going to build a plan. Well, now we actually have the opportunity to flip everything on its head and think about, okay, what is my target audience first? And we have to build this individual persona and this individual person that we are going after because where that individual is, there's lots of others. So what we have to do, let's take the landscaping. Let's talk about the behaviors of somebody who is most likely going to purchase landscaping services. They're going to have a yard. They're going to own their home. They're probably going to be, they probably have kids because either that or they're professionals that don't have children that are going to mow them for, mow the lawn for them or do mm -hmm. their landscaping for mm -hmm. them or, you know, lawn care, all the above. So what are the individual? That's the first question I always ask are what are the behaviors of your customers first? And we target that. So are they married? Are they single? What's their income? What other behaviors outside of that do they have? What's at, what size is their home? How long have they owned their home? Um, so it's things like that that we start to think about. And then we actually build a whole media platform and a whole media budget around that. Wow. That's wild. It's, a diff it's different than what it used to be. It used to be like, oh, I'll just throw this radio ad up and my target demographics within that area. But now we actually have so many precision targeting tools that we can use as opposed to going so broad and seeing what sticks. So you can be more specific and because you're being more specific, you know that there's obviously more people. So you're able to hit more people who are actually going to buy. So you have a better return on your marketing. Yep. See, Absolutely. So you're going to be able to actually quantify what you're doing and your return on ad spend is going to be higher. You're going to be able to track things better because of the fact that you know that audience first. That's the most important piece is that you actually get to know your audience then from there you're building out where you need to go how do you, how do you know your audience how do you figure that out 
get to know them. One of the first well, things Well, I mean, how do you do that? I mean, okay, so, like, you can go and you can shake hands with all the homeowners, but is there, like, should you, like, pre-build a list of questions and, like, start taking notes, or do you do that in an Excel sheet? Like, almost like, how do you do that? Collecting hmm. that, you data I mean? is the part, yeah. I mean, if we're going to take the landscaping example, you get to know who, who the homeowners are that you're... Are there certain neighborhoods that you find the most success in? Are there certain areas that you find the most success in? Um, what are the common threads? What you're looking for is a common thread among your audiences that you're working with. In. So you're getting to know them. So you're collecting information on the people that you already are doing business with. That's the first thing that you're going to do. That's how you're going to start. And then you're going to, it's trial and error sometimes. But for the most part, you really, they start to tell you who they are just based off of your, if you're, if your landscaping crew is going to homes and you know what kind of vehicles they're driving and you know what you know what their right. um, hobbies are, what they're doing, like you're that's data, that's information that you're collecting, and you're starting to see, okay, this is the price range of vehicles that they're driving. This is the price range of home that they have. This is, there's two individuals in the home. Uh, they're busy. They're this. They're that. You know, you start to build that type of persona out. Birds of a feather have you I've ever heard of businesses like where they start out? And they provide us the provider service, sell product or whatever. And they have the idea of here's who's going to buy this. And then two, three years down the road, it goes, oh, oh, I have the wrong audience. I, like the audience will come find you sometimes. And, and that'll change your, your perception of like, okay, well, I thought so-and-so was my audience and this is who's going to buy it. And then it goes out to be, okay, wow, it's, it's 55 to 65. I thought it was going to be 35 to 45 year old people. Oh, it's all females. <laughs> Primarily females. I didn't know that, you know, or males. Uh, oh, they have this interest or, oh, well, now my average ticket tra or transaction is this amount instead of, you know, things change. Have you ever heard of that? I think that's entrepreneurship. Oh, uh, yeah. What do you guys think? Yeah, I'd say, I would agree with that. <laughs> I'd say like you have your own uh, interpretation of how like your business is seen and operates and what it sells and who it sells to, but Sometimes people will start to define you and you learn from your audience yeah. more than they I would learn agree from with you, that. you know? Because I think, and especially in my business, I know when I originally thought of the people who, the, the particular jobs we're doing now, that the jobs we want to do, um, before I was actually doing business with these people, I I assumed they were someone else. You know, again, we're building a persona. I, I assumed differently. And now as our business has progressed, I've realized like, no. You know, they don't live in those neighborhoods. They don't really do that. Most of them are business owners or retired or something like that, you know, and it's like you start to, like you said, get to know your audience. I I ask them enough questions that I get to know, right, their hobbies, you know, the, what, what's important to them on a day-to-day, -day, you know, their favorite places to eat and stuff like that, you know, and, and I guess I never thought about, you know, looking at my favorite customers and be like, who are you, you know, and, mm -hmm. and working backwards from there. I have so you just to some something. degree, but not what? really. So you you just hit on something really important. Where are your favorite customers and get to know your favorite customers? Because frankly, as entrepreneurs and as business owners and anybody in business, we kind of, we, we like to do business with people we, we like too. Right. And we get along with, and who are, who are the best customers for us? And when you find that sweet spot customer, you're going to get more and more and more and your, your team's going to be happy. You're going to be happier. Like there's a lot more quality that's going to come out of the work. So when you do that and you find that, that's what you want to dig into and that's where you want to lean in. But you're, you are spot on with what you're already doing. You're talking to your customers. You're talking to who they are. Um, you're just like you just said, you're surprised. They don't live in the neighborhoods I thought they'd live in. They don't drive the cars that I thought they'd, they drive. They're retired. They work. They're business owners. Like various things. A lot of times, I mean, landscaping, the first thing I can think of is if I don't have time, I literally don't have time to do it. And that's where that's the individual that you're going to want to go after. Why don't they have time? Because they own businesses, because their lives are busy, because, you know, what is that? Because they're and you're traveling, because they're retired. <laughs> exactly. It's all, but they want to make sure that their home still looks right. nice when they come right. home. Yeah. And they want to have that there. And those are the things that it's every business has this. So, Braden, you're spot on that we sometimes start businesses and then down the road, our audience actually starts to show a different side of itself, what we thought it was going to be. We can make assumptions going yeah. into business, but once we start actually digging into the audience, we don't always know. That's crazy. I, I did. That's crazy. I never thought about it that way, but I, I 100% thought 
my target audience or my ideal customer was someone different when I first started to where now, and now I realize who they are and it's crazy. Cause I'm like, okay, but there's also a step above you. I can't <laughs> you know, tell you there's too. that next target audience to get to that next step. Yeah. And I can't they tell you too lead, how important. And then start to grow. Yeah. Yeah. And I, it's so important that like you in your role as the owner or, or CEO or president or whatever, you know, the, the guy, the man, you know, whoever's in charge or whatever. And you, your project managers, whoever's actually working with people during the whole process of being of them receiving the service or product, right? And then take it a step further too, with also whoever's selling it. Those two roles, including yours, can uh, help define that messaging and what your customers are actually wanting and looking for. If you can communicate those three roles together, supply that information to marketing. Marketing can refine the messaging to then create better leads. Does that better make sense? quality. Better yeah. quality leads. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's important. If you actually have the focus and we, we flip marketing on its head now because it used to be so broad and go for whomever because anybody can use my service. And now if we actually get to know our audience to the point where they are the individual star in which we're going after, right? They are the North Star. And we think of them that way. And when we have that, and we think through that, then there's going to be dozens and hundreds and thousands of people just like them that we're going to go after. And it actually makes this whole, the whole generational funnel and the whole marketing funnel, it's starting to flatten out. It's starting to change. I mean, we can't, we can no longer block people in generational blocks of 20 years at a time because there's so much evolution in media and there's so much evolution in technology. So now what we can do is look at these audiences as opposed to going, broad demographics. Let's go into very targeted precision individuals that we're going after. So now that we've kind of set the foundation with who, who we're targeting and we figured all that out. Um, now we're starting to run some ads. We're advertising yep. on, on Google or social media. Uh, what would you say are some of the key metrics or indicators to keep an eye on? Like, our, like is well, it CPM, throw, click through rate, yeah. or is it something else or what? It's all the above. So Google is one data set that you can programmatically buy, but there's also many others. So I would not um, dismiss others. Finding a partner that's direct seats on DSPs um, is a very important additional asset on top of just Google and social. And I know we'll get into the Google social programmatic conversation later, but in KPIs, when we're looking at various things, your CPM is important, but you want to also look at a quality CPM. I've been preaching this for a long time. Um, there are bad players out there. There are DSPs. That, this is why it's quality, quality versus quantity. When it comes to a CPM, you could pay a $2 CPM, but you're most likely buying bots and you're most likely buying bad things. Yeah. So you really want to make sure that you're getting into quality and you're buying and purchasing the right CPM with that. That's where a partner does come in as opposed to a vendor. So if you, you just want to get eyeballs, I mean, that's cheap yeah. and it's easy. There's nothing complicated about that. Yeah. I was actually working with well, one of my clients can. this morning where they yeah. don't have, um, they, they were like, oh, we didn't know you guys do lead gen. I'm like, yeah, if you take your budget and you 4X your budget, now I've got different advertising opportunities. I can now do uh, lead generation forms. Uh, right. the creative, they hired some guy out of India to do this and nothing against people outside of the country, but he didn't do anything special. Like the creative was off brand. It was terrible. The copy was, uh, all over the place and the targeting was everybody within 11 kilometer miles and whatever, why it's kilometers. I don't know why. Um, cause that's not how we metric here. <laughs> so, but it was just everyone within the ages of like 30 to, to 65. And I was telling our, I was telling the client, I was like, I was like, there's nothing complicated or unique about what this was done. Yeah. You know, I was like, yeah, we've so built you a lot of your target audiences yeah. ahead of time. You know, those aren't even used. And I'm wondering if we can get better results if we tried our audiences and the right brand branded creative first. Well, and let's take that as the example, your CP, you can have a very low CPM and you're going to be on MFAs, which are made for advertising only websites. You're going to get bots. You're going to get that are not actual eyes when you're looking at that. So quality and finding a good partner to actually put you through these things and do them correctly is important. And that's in Google, that's in programmatic. Make sure that you're not just looking at, oh, well, this is the lowest CPM and I'm gonna get 11 million impressions tomorrow on this. It doesn't matter. You actually wanna get good quality impressions and you're based on the goal of the campaign. So with that though too, you wanna look at your click-through rates. You wanna look at, um, what are your conversions? Are you tracking your conversions? And in programmatic, we can tag the ads 
to see what they're doing then on the website, on the back end of the website. Once they click on that ad, then what are they doing? Are they filling it? Is there a form fill? Is there not? What, how long are they staying on the website? Where are they on the website? Those are all stories and data that we can find out and see, and then we're retargeting them from there. So these are things that that we need to be looking at, but actually converting those and tracking those conversions of going on the website. But define what the conversion is. What is that for you? Is it is it a sale on the website? Is it an e-commerce sale? Is it a form fill? And what is it that you're actually wanting to define? When we go into the digital advertising conversation, I always start with, okay, what is our objective? And then I can yep. go in, all right, these are the type of ads that we could run with that objective. And then we go into creative and messaging. Yep. Right. Uh, I've laughed at some of the companies who are like, oh, we guarantee, you know, 300,000 impressions a week. You know, that's what they're paying for. They sell this package and it's X amount of impressions a month, a week or a day or whatever, but none of it's targeted, you know, and, and a lot of people are well, like, oh, we're doing, you know, we're doing ads. <laughs> Well, and that's where it's okay to quote guarantee impressions, but you need to know what your layers are and your targets are that are going into it. Because right. like I said, you can, you can get all the impressions in a week that you want. It's just not going to make sense. But I do like what you're saying here is that the very first thing that you should do that any of us should do as marketers is what is my objective of this campaign that I'm about to run? Is it just brand awareness that I'm going to use a different tactic than if it's actually sales conversions? So I have, or I'm going to use all the above, right? Depending on what I'm actually trying to accomplish. So that's the number one thing. And then thinking through the tactics and then thinking through the creative. Oftentimes, if we go back to the Mad Men days and I can't tell you how many times it's like, oh, we have all this wonderful creative done. Now let's figure out the tactics. And in reality, we really need, those two are uh, two different pieces of the science that we need to make sure we have. You can have the best ad in the world, but if your target audience never sees it, then it, it's a bad ad. It's not a good ad. And you can, you can always build a target audience, promote the ad or the creative to it or whatever. And it be wrong. Like, yes. that's why it's good to, you know, you can do some AB testing. And and when people go into Absolutely. that conversation, they're like, they're like, yeah, we AB test. I'm like, okay, well, some people you don't really? even know what that is, but you really <laughs> AB test when you only change like one variable. So exact right. same messaging, creative budget, yes. timeline, change the audience. Yeah. Okay. Same thing, yeah. but then change the creative. Okay. Same thing, but yeah. then change the messaging. And then you'll fine tune yeah. that to where it's like, bam, we hit the mark and it's working. Yes. You're spot on AB testing and AB testing done. Right. There's a lot of people, again, bad players out there that say that they do it, but they're not doing it correctly. So those are the things that you have to think through. But I mean, the neat thing is, is in today's world, how cool is it that we have all these opportunities at our fingertips? What, 25 years ago, we couldn't do this. We couldn't do any of this. Now we have so many different opportunities. Yeah. Well, how, how can you tell if a campaign is like truly creative or sorry, truly effective? Well, true. If you're tagging, if you're going straight digital and let's just talk about the digital tactics here. So I, I think I shared this story with you um, when we talked last time, I remember, you know, 20 years ago or so, I remember having a sales manager and a client ask, well, how do I know that these ads are working? And he was like, the cash register is ringing. And I just remember yeah, being right. oh, that's so gross. Like, ah, like that does not make anybody feel warm and fuzzy. But the cool thing is today we can actually track those conversions. So it goes back to what is the goal of the campaign. If the brand awareness can't, if, if brand awareness is what your goal is, then we're looking at the quality of CPMs. What domains are we showing up on? Mm. Um, how, how many impressions are we getting? Where are we? That's that KPI. If I'm looking at sales and it's an e-commerce, then I'm going to actually track that conversion, that ad going back to the website and what is my return on ad sales there. So those are the things that you have to think through. It really goes back to what the goal of the campaign is. Why um, transitioning? Did you say, did you want to say anything? No, but oh. I, I'm learning a lot about this, honestly. And I'm really enjoying Mary, it. Mary is like so educated i, I love oh, it. last time we talked i loved it she's very well spoken too you guys are so nice thank you <laughs> uh okay so the difference between google and social media in the paid advertising realm um they operate on they, they operate different so like on google yep. typically with google ads like it's a different method of paying for ads right yep. and, and on social media you can pay you don't pay cost per click click necessarily, nope. uh, but you can pay CPM, right? Cost per yep. impressions. So yep. like if I have a budget of a thousand dollars on Google and a thousand dollars on Facebook and Instagram, 
that thousand dollars I've noticed has been guaranteed. Like it will spend on Facebook and Instagram, but it may not always spend on Google because people have to search and click on it in order for that budget to be charged. Yeah. And each tactic has its strength and where we're looking at it. So, um, and I, I want to throw programmatic into this outside of Google. What's so programmatic? Your, What's that? For programmatic. So remember how I talked about 25 years ago, I'd have to send an RFP and get a rate sheet and put a whole buy together, TV, radio, print, all the above and websites. Programmatic is now I'm, it's an automation bidding process that I go through instead. So it's using AI um, to actually bid and bid the ads and I'm going and targeting for the audience. So I am starting with that audience. So let's talk about the landscaping audience of whatever models that I've built of who that individual is. I'm bidding on them and where they are. I'm looking at contextual targeting. What kind of articles are they reading? What kind of videos are they watching? And we're making sure our ads are showing up where the audience is. So it's very much a um, better use of money. It's a, it's a very targeted use of money. I'm glad you brought up bidding too, because that can kind of go into the conversation of budgeting. Um, Yes. Like uh, when you advertise, that's what you're doing. You're bidding with, with all your competitors. If you are like, well, I'll pay $2, whatever it is, CPM or cost per click. That's my, that's my bidding cap. If a competitor is like, well, I'll pay $3, guess who yep. they're going to prioritize, right? Yep. So that's Absolutely. why like cost per clicks can be higher than others in certain industries. Huh. Well, and like HVAC more, is nuts and, and roofing, yes. like you could pay $50 a click. Like you need a $5,000 budget, <laughs> $30 a click. Well, Some of those competitors are crazy. And you also may have national brands like Lowe's or Home Depot yep. competing in those competing in those same spaces, which for the small business owner like you, if you're trying to, uh, you know, sell whatever similar service, good luck. Right. Yeah. And what you're looking at. So in that sense too, Google and paid search, you know, you're paying for those clicks. They're programmatic. I'm looking at connected TV, streaming, streaming audio, podcasting, um, native advertising, where you're showing up in articles all the display, pre-roll, all the above in the programmatic space. So in that sense, I'm actually targeting the impression of the individual and I'm actually paying for the impression, not the click. So that's a different way of looking at it as well. So I'm looking at that individual. Let's say my target audience is an outdoor female, active, drives a um, four by four car of some sort with four wheel drive, um, has two kids, makes a hundred plus a year, is in the C-suite. Those are behaviors of her that I can target. I can target by job title. I can target by what type of vehicle she drives. I can target um, what, how many children she has, how many, what kind of pets she has, things like that. So the more layers that I add on, the higher the cost of the impression, but the more targeted my impression is too. So those are the things that you have to look at and really build through too. So in the programmatic space, that's a bucket now that, Frankly, Google and social used to be where we were the most, but Facebook is no longer the targeting tool. Facebook's still a great tool, but it's just not the targeting tool that it used to be. And now we can take what we could target in Facebook and we can move it into programmatic and actually target to those layers as well. Um, much better than we can in Facebook. Facebook, it, we can do build lookalike audiences. We can do things like that in Facebook, but in, um, in programmatic, I can take first party data and also build lookalike audiences but then also look and target through those behaviors as well. Have ever noticed that um, if you advertise on one platform and another, that they will somehow benefit each other in certain ways. So like if you advertise, I'm just going to keep using this as an example. If you advertise on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, whatever, and you also advertise on Google, have ever noticed that if you stop social media advertising that Google's affected or vice versa? So it's the omni-channel approach that really is important for today's world. Uh, And frankly, it was before too. Uh, When I first started in media, it was good. The more you had going on that a target audience could get a high frequency within a week of hearing your ad and seeing your ad, then you should, then you would be good on being able to see um, multiple things and multiple frequencies within that. So for you at getting your target audience, that's a really, really important thing to be able to go after. And yes, they help each other. They always do. So, um, but it's also, it goes back not to beat a dead horse on this. It goes back to what is the, the goal of the campaign. Um, but th- I'm going to also then add in one more layer to this. Let's make sure that we're not cannibalizing against our own message as well. 
right? in Google and in social, there's times that we can be bidding against ourselves and we don't even realize that in our own ads. <laughs> We're bidding, I'm going to go back to the bidding conversation where we're actually bidding against ourselves and hurt, harming our own click rate or whatever it is, because we're actually bidding against what we need to do and we're cannibalizing our own message. What are, what are some common issues that you've seen lately since we've last talked in, uh, in advertising? <laughs> in common issues. I would say actually it's more of the common shifts that, um, that, are happening in the, the evolution. It, it's amazing to me how much the pandemic actually changed our behaviors, but we're not seeing a huge shift back to old behaviors. We're seeing it staying in the current behaviors. So what I would say, like, what are the things that I'm seeing are probably more bad players um, because this is a, this is a place that's like free reigning and everybody can be excited to just go get impressions galore. Um, an increase in MFAs. That's a big deal. Um, that made term? for advertising. Website. So MFA is a made for advertising website. That's all it is. You're getting an impression, but nobody's reading the content that's on that website. Um, this is, this is there. like those, those, uh, backlinking SEO guys, yeah. uh, around the world who are like, Hey, we have a domain authority website. We'll you know, link you up to 400 websites. Give me a hundred bucks. Yep. And they're trash. Yep. That's exactly right. It's, well, it's that. And it's just your ads showing up someplace. It's an impression. And people are like, we're doing SEO. So any of the companies that like charge 200 bucks a month, $99 a month or whatever, stuff like that to do SEO. A lot of times like they'll, they'll buy backlinks and stuff like that once a month. You're from saying some guys like that. You're saying I don't want my sticker some in some trucker stop truck stop in the middle of Wisconsin. Pretty much, and that's what it's like in the digital space. Yeah, man, I know. Imagine that. <laughs> well, that's actually that's, a, that's probably the best analogy I've heard of it. Yeah, to be yeah. well done. You know, you want job, what you want. I've been in plenty of truck stops. <laughs> yeah, right. What you want if you do something with the if you do something with the Tulsa Girls Home, you have me do a press release and submit it to like some local got some local. Uh, News people like Tulsa World mm -hmm. or BA Buzz or whatever, and have them actually publish something. Like that's those are high quality. They're local. Yeah. It'll all backlink together. Those are good. You got Google News, Yahoo News, um, Bloomberg or whatever, right? Like those are good websites. Hmm. Yeah, that's and those true. are the, the. And you can if you have a good partner in it, they're going to be able to list what sites you're on. And they'll be able to tell you programmatically where you're going. Plus, a good partner is also going to be able to blacklist whatever sites you don't want to be on. Disavow, blacklist. Mm -hmm. So sometimes like, uh, and, and this just happens, whether it's bots or people doing it intentionally, they could take your link and you may not know it, but it could be on a hundred websites and all those websites are fraudulent or scammy, right? And now it's hurting your business showing up in search results. And it's also making it harder for you to advertise like, and let's say on Google, um, that could, hmm. right. And that whole realm of things. And so what you got to do is you got to find that link and there's software to be able to do that. You take that link, you go into Google search console, you tell Google to disavow it and to basically get rid of it. You said, Hey, don't count this against me. I don't want this. This is a bad website. Don't count it, whatever. And then they go, okay. Hmm. Yeah. And on the programmatic space, we actually can go on the back end and control what sites you don't want to show up on. That's the other piece about finding a good partner in programmatic. Um, because I can't tell you how many times we'll take over an account. If you're doing Google and if you're doing social programmatics, the next step, and that's the next thing to start looking at in your budgets um, and really carrying that out because that's, that's the way all paid media, I think is going to head in that direction within the next 10 years. I really do think that that's where we're headed, that traditional television, radio, all the above, the way we bid it and do it is going to change and go into a more programmatic world. We're seeing direct out of home already starting to do that. And, but the key thing is, is if you are an actual partner, when we take over accounts and we take it from, or, and we're doing, helping another agency or helping a direct brand, however we're doing it, I can't tell you how many times we're like, Ooh, shouldn't be on that website. Ooh, shouldn't be on that website. And it really is. It's the brand protection side of it. That's often overlooked. And it's not something that's like, yep, that's so important to make sure that you do. And you really need to concentrate on that and ask your partners about that. Are you doing brand protection? What are you doing for brand protection? Making sure that I'm not getting bots, seeing my ads all the time, making sure I'm not just on MFAs, making sure that I'm not on adult sites and things like that. If my brand is not supposed to be doing these things. There's, I, so I've seen, really I've gotten important. emails to pick up on, to pick up off on that. I've seen emails yeah. where they're like, um, oh, hey, uh, we've noticed that you're listed on, 
X and X, whatever website, and uh, we can get you removed. It's 500 bucks or a thousand bucks, whatever. And, right. And you're like, oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> That's happened yeah. a few times. And now it's no. like, all right, now this guy's scamming me for it. He put me on this website and now I've got to go find this link and yeah. disavow it. Yeah. Yep. And so what you, I mean, you're finding a partner and your ad is when you're looking at that paid media partner and your ads are showing up in places that you shouldn't be, they, it, really, you've got to ask those questions back. And on the back end, it's not hard. It's easy for us. We, I like to say it's human driven AI because AI is only as good as the information that we're going to give it and what we utilize with it. And so when we're looking at AI and we're using these tools, if I'm showing, if our brands are showing up on sites that they shouldn't be, I want to blacklist those sites. And it's easy. It's not hard to do and programmatic. It's very easy to do. So, yeah. Hmm. What should we budget? What's the budget oh, for, for advertising on any one of these platforms? For, it's so funny to me. So in, pro, in programmatic, you need to be looking at a couple thousand minimum a month that you want to budget. So it's a little bit more expensive than it is with um, Google or social, depending on what you want to accomplish. Again, not to beat the dead horse again, but the horse is coming right back in. It depends on what the objective is and what we're trying to do. Um, the In today's world of what we're trying to build and look at, the goal is what's first, but there's a lot of underdog brands that we come along and help to really overcome that their competition is spending five, 10 times the amount that they are, but you can find the various areas and various things that your audience might be that your competition is not paying attention to. So one of the first things I like to do is actually a competitive analysis, pick your top three to five. Um, we have lots of research tools and um, opportunities to be able to show what your competitors are spending in a market, uh, what kinds of things they're doing and build your budget based off of that. It doesn't mean you have to match their budget, but start there, start there seeing and knowing, okay, this is what my top five competitors are spending. Now let me build back what I think I can do to make that happen. I, it looks like your wheels are turning. Hey, Mine? Yeah. I'm just learning a lot. This is interesting. Yeah. Hey, I've sure. obviously I've been in conversation with you about all this recently and there's just a lot to it that obviously I don't know, which <laughs> that's why we hired you, Brayden. But it's just, it's funny because to me, the way I can interpret this is it's just a boxwood. And Chanson is what I mean. There's like 50 different varieties of boxwoods, right? And they all look the same. They all look relatively the same. But getting a good quality is different than just yep. getting your off the shelf, whatever, right? You're going to get a boxwood, yes. But what do you want? And what what's your objective, mm -hmm. as you keep saying, you know? And I, it's just... It's just interesting to see how it all kind of correlates together. And honestly, I just, I just didn't know it was, it was so involved. Well, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and gone are the days that you actually have to have the huge budgets. I mean, we work with brands that are gigantic household names to small mom and pops. And you used to ha be able to play in the advertising world. You used to have to have millions of dollars. And now in today's world, there are things that you can do in the thousands uh, in the, that you're able to do and help. And even in some cases, the hundreds, like there's some things that you can do, but it's really, it goes back to what you were just saying. It's, it's the objective of it, but, and what you're willing to put into it mm -hmm. and doing it well. The thing is, that's so amazing that the opportunity that's in front of us right now is it's doing it well and doing it right, right out of the gate. What do you think? I'm in the same boat as Abel. <laughs> I've learned more. I mean, I do a little bit because I did a little bit of marketing for, for my own stuff for a little bit too. And um, I never knew it, you could get this in depth with it. I mean, it makes sense, but... And then, like he said, just going back to you have to know your demographic. And in the more specific way you can describe your demographic, ideal demographic, the more – what's the word I'm looking for? Just the better it will be. That's it. Yeah. The more efficient, too. Yeah. Efficient. That's what I was yeah. trying to go for. Hey, yeah, so but, good news for you. You don't have really any backlinks. <laughs> you have 23 and none that are toxic. So that's good for you. I don't want to be for that one. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe in a future business venture. Oh, hush. Mine, <laughs> no, I, I would oh, never. I would never. I've got some. Not my cup of tea. Or coffee. Or it's a coffee. Not my, yeah. 
Huh. I, I don't know. I guess I'm just kind of lost. At, I, I didn't realize, again, you could get so specific. And when you look at it backwards, I know I've learned a lot from Brayden, but, you know, kind of like you said, you look at it backwards and, and kind of clicked to me earlier, like, what are my five of your customers? How do I how yeah. do I target those guys? And the reality is, is, is it's not that hard. I mean, I talk to my customers. I like to build relationships with them. Um, I just never thought about it from this perspective. I'm sure Braden's tried to get that, you know, through to me, but I just. It's hard to it's explain hard. this kind of stuff. Like until you kind of get into the headspace where you're like, okay, I'm starting to grasp it. And then once you start to do it and start to run it and manage it or whatever, you're like, okay, this is actually making sense. And once you get behind it and you actually see some of the back end stuff, you're like, okay, all right, now it's starting to click. I understand why I need an objective. I understand why I have to budget, why I have to budget. I understand. Yeah, no, this, this is making everything like make more sense. Yeah. And the more you do it, the more sense it's going to make. And then once you start seeing your reporting, so, you know, for us, you're having a hard time opening it. You good? I got it. Finally. I, got I wish it. I could good. help you from yeah. afar. I can't. I know. Well, but, I, I didn't have my keys on me. <laughs> I don't have mine either. <laughs> okay. Got it. Oh, when you're we're almost it, Twinkies. <laughs> brown shoes, brown pants, but different colored socks. And sure, but I'll take it. I'm dressed up today. Brought out the red in my logo. <laughs> Good marketing. Yeah, that's right. Learn it from Braden. <laughs> I learned everything marketing I know. I pretty well learned from Braden. It's just, you know, I don't pay attention or else I'd probably learn a lot more. Oh, no. <laughs> if I start paying attention, well, I won't have to hire him. You know, <laughs> not true. No, because no, we'll, we'll work better. We'll work better. We'll work better because you understand. We, we are working yeah. better. We are working better. The more that we talk about You're marketing right. and the more that we, I show you back end stuff, the more that we sit down yep. and do all that, yep. you go, oh, okay, this is clicking. It gets right. your wheels spinning. Marketing is so related to like just business in general. Yeah. Right. You know, and it's not just. Hey, Set it and know. forget it type yeah. situation. Yeah. Like it's not a landscape no. where you're like, hey, here's your design. Let's install it. And then, hey, I'll look, come look at it in five years and say, hey, it's so beautiful. It For but this, it's literally ever evolving. Yeah. And I think that's actually why the mystery is in it. And frankly, you know, Braden, you know this just as well as I do in this, that there's a lot of bad players for that very reason. Because of the fact that it's easy to just pull the wool over everybody's eyes because it's so confusing and it's ever changing. Yeah. And in reality, um, it. It's not, we're using the same, like I talk about it quite often in this sense where I say, look, we're still consuming television. We're just streaming it. And now I can target it so much better than having to go and buy a $4,000 one time commercial spot. Yeah. So these are the things that you have to think about is it's actually evolving to our benefit and being able to be even better for us. And you're going to learn more and more. The more you pay attention to reports, the more you pay attention to ask your questions. Like, yeah, trust your trust your marketing partner in it, but ask questions so that you understand. And frankly, a good marketing partner is going to love that you're asking the questions. He does. <laughs> yep. It's annoying sometimes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. <I'm, laughs> I try to encourage the people that we work with. I'm like, I want you to ask questions. And if yeah. I can't answer, it's challenging. And I, and I want yeah. that, right? And if exactly. uh, and if I can answer, then great. I'm doing my job, you know. And yep. same way with everyone else on my team. I'm like, we need to make sure that, you know, our clients really understand everything that we're doing and then try to ask the right questions so then, or, or yep. present the right thing. And yep. yeah, sometimes it's difficult. <laughs> like, like, again, we're managing, um, we're managing, um, uh, shoot. Spit uh, it out. Facebook, man. Facebook and Instagram ads for a chiropractic business. And they were like, well, we didn't know you guys could do lead gen. I'm like, it's just a different objective in your ads that you're already paying us to do. Right. <laughs> so I'm like, a, save the money for whoever else you're paying, cancel them at the end of your 90 day contract and yeah. let us do it. Yeah. And that's, I think at the end of the day, what's really weird and hard is that there's so many people that are just trying to go for pieces of the pie. And actually that goes back to the cannibalization. When you have more than one partner doing things, you don't realize your ads are actually bidding against itself in that. And in reality, give one partner that money and they could work together. I mean, and it's fine. A lot of groups, like we collaborate with other agencies and other marketing people all the time. And we know what our lane is that we're going to work within so that and we're professional within that. And we're all going to be on the same page and collaborate. But it's it's a crucial, crucial thing to know what the specialty is that that you're carrying. But then also don't be confused by marketers that, and agencies and groups that come to you that say, OK, yeah, this is what we're doing. You have another agency doing the same thing. And 
really just find out the information. You're spot on that taking that th a couple thousand dollars that they're spending a month with somebody else and putting it towards your campaign, they're going to get so much more out of it. Uh, what questions would you have for us? I mean, you know, you're very specialized in your role, right? Mm -hmm. And we're all three business owners. So if there's a question yep. that you would ask, uh, it could be a challenging question or it could be something to benefit you. Oh. Do you have anything? I don't, I keep trying to think off the top of my head. Cause I think at the end of the day, um, all of us are business owners first and then we go into our specialties. So I always like to know, like, I, I believe a lot of times that we're often born entrepreneurs and it's a personality trait that we all have. Um, it was kind of what we were joking about at the beginning of entrepreneurs are not always the best employees because we're always thinking of the next idea. Oh, yeah. So when it comes to that as entrepreneurs, what are, what things do you have, or what have you surrounded yourself with so that you can carry out your ideas and you can carry out what you're doing mm. and new ideas, new things. I like, I, I, I have surrounded myself with a team of people who like to question everything that I say, which that's good. I think is, has been one of the greatest strengths that we have in my business because I'm a free thinker as most visionary and entrepreneurs are. And, uh, it's nice to bring back to reality, uh, sometimes some ideas and whatnot. And, and, you know, I've really, I think that's just been the biggest thing that I've done is, is surround myself with the right people to make sure that kind of like you said earlier, you work with other people, you stay in your lane, you know, whether it's working in the field, working in the office or anything like that, um, just surrounding yourself with the right people really just makes a difference. And it's hard as business owners to find the right people to surround yourself with. But I think it comes both internally, you know, in your, in your realm, as far as like for me, my office, as well as, like Brayden and Chance and, and other business owners that I just associate with on, on a daily basis, you know, that's what keeps me just aligned in my entrepreneurship, you know, in that whole situation. Like you said, we're, it's a personality trait. So uh, mm -hmm. it's really hard to understand people who don't have the same personality trait. <laughs> Well, we all think that everybody thinks this way. And then we find out, nope, we're no, like less don't. than the population. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no one else thinks like us. Yeah, some people yeah. tell me like, your, your brain. I'm yeah. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah. Right. What do you mean? <laughs> like, it's just, yeah. I'm just doing this. And they're like, no, you're doing that. I'm like, and <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Right. And you, you, um, you have your thing. You have your thing. I have my thing. Like I, I can't be you. you know? No. Yeah. Right. It, and, and like you said, you know, we, we're all specialized in our, our field, but we're entrepreneurs at heart. And that's ultimately what keeps us all moving. Like you said, it's, it's, yeah, you, you can't necessarily, we can't be each other by any means, but we have that personality trait where to some degree, we know not to some degree, we know we can't do this alone. And you're like, well, mm -hmm. you kind of got to build that team around you. And, you know, like I said, whether in the field, customers, whatever, that team is a whole group of people from every avenue of your business but you start to find, like, for me, you know, your favorite customers, your favorite vendors, your favorite everything. And it's like all of a sudden you have this circle of people that, hey, when things aren't going right, you just happen to talk to your people. Who do you call? And, right. You, you call your people. And then they come to you in <laughs> solutions. I was yawning. I couldn't say anything. <laughs> Who are you going to call? Ghostbusters. There you go. Thank there you me. go. Oh, gosh. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that was, that was a good question. So how you surround yourself with people that are always asking you questions and, like, tying you down. I surround myself with people like you guys, like like-minded thinking people that keeps me pushing and always going toward the next thing. Fair enough. Yep. Simple, 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 but yeah. yeah but it, but at the same time, it's not all that simple. It's actually complex. Was, you was, be, it is. It's, you have to be intentional about that. You have to be intentional true. about who you surround yourself with and um, actually thinking it through and, I am a huge believer that we're all better together and yes. when we can all feed off of each other and when you find that circle of whether it's employees and team, but then also other entrepreneurs that you can just bounce things off of and yeah. frankly, just say something. I have this stupid idea and then I need, I need you to tell me why I should not do this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> talk me out of this. Talk me out of this. Tell me why. Um, because you know, I, I, there's somebody that I'm trying to remember who it was that said once they were like, 
they said I came into my team and I was like, I have another idea. And they're like, well, do you want us to work on this idea from today or the five you gave us last week? Because I don't know which one you want us to yeah. work on. Because entrepreneurs, that's how we think. We're always going. We're yeah. always thinking of new things. It, my, my team makes a joke every now and again. I'm like, oh, I have an idea. Like, oh, is that number seven for the week? I'm like, yeah, man, exactly. see, I'll cut. They, they say, like, well, you're supposed to come up with 10 a week. I'm like, yeah, I don't know if I can come up with 10 ideas a week, but okay. I'm like, okay, well, you're on track for the week. Yeah, you're, you're right. You're good. So I told uh, Sydney the other day, yesterday or whatever, I was like, when you and me talk, or like sometimes I'll, I'll walk in the room or I'll send you a message, and usually it's me trying to relay a piece of information that is something for you to do or do with. So I'm like... What I would do is immediately take that and then put that into at some point in time, you're going to take action and don't just leave it on a notepad or on an empty piece of paper. Cause I'm like, you're going to forget about it. I'm going to be like, I'm going to forget about it. And then it's going to get brought up and I'm going to be like, "Uh Oh, we should have done that. Why didn't you do that? We talked about it. You're going to be like, Oh, I forgot my bad. You know? Oh, I got busy or whatever it is. I'm like, just take like two seconds, just plug it put it into a task, put a reminder, put it on your calendar, set it for another date. That's not a sticky note. That's a to-do yeah. list. <laughs> well, and, but a to-do list, but the, the, the to-do list has, has an associated date and a time yes. to actually approach it. Right. right. And then you so, just kind of continually build something. So, you know, if you just yep. continually have tasks that you build out for next week on Tuesday, you know what you're doing on Tuesday. Right. You know? Well, every visionary needs their implementer. And that's, that's a key, key thing that's is Maddie. every time. <laughs> True. Have, have I'm like, somebody. Maddie, I can't think. And I just kind of yeah. like start, I was like, I just need a brain dump. And so I was yeah. like, brain dump, she'll tar- start taking notes. And then, and then they can take yeah. the action on it. Every visionary needs that. Otherwise we don't, and it's really, really important that somebody, that each entrepreneur and each visionary, because I'm a visionary, like if you identify that in yourself is truly find that implementer to carry out everything that you are envisioning and then they'll hold you to task of hey a week ago this was the idea this is what i've built out this is where we are what else would you like to do with it and then you can be like actually i talked to so and so and so and so i think it's a dumb idea now and move on yeah Yeah, that'll (laughs) happen that'll so happen and i'll be like okay scratch it moving on (laughs) yeah (laughs) next subject Uh, yeah i love it that's that's totally it put that in the file cabinet for maybe when that idea thinks sounds like a good idea again you need you need on your board the list of dumb ideas yes and you're just like oh uh, so that i remember that i already came up with that idea yeah oh i love that yeah that's happened too hey you already thought about that and it wasn't a good idea i'm like we did it last month and it didn't turn out well yeah remember when this happened yeah Exactly. I've, I've and told my team, we I'm always like, go, but this time it's different. <laughs> yeah, this time yeah, it's different. It's, it's all different now. We're going to do it yeah. like that, but similar like this. Same, 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 same but, but different. different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he comes up and he's like, he's like, we do the same, same, but, but different. different. <laughs> <laughs> that movie got so much backlash. Oh, gosh. It's a great movie. Oh, I thought it was a What was I it called? It. What was that movie called? Unbelievable, guys. You guys have been doing this all day. <laughs> I ask him something. Way, like, to, way to call them out. Come yeah, on. they've literally been. Di- they've probably done it six times already. Was it the dictator? No, can't even that's pick, that other. Can't even pick the movies. Oh, that's funny. Hold on, hold on. I want to. Well, I mean, don't necessarily. Go, oh no, this isn't a book. Hold on. Oh. James Franco. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we is it the? It's the interview. The interview. That's what it was. The interview. That's what it was. Oh my different goodness. languages. <laughs> huh? We have, have different faces. Yeah. Inside. inside. We are All right. same, 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 same. Same, same. But, but different. different. <laughs> but still same. But still same. <laughs> it's a good movie. Okay, Mary. Um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for sharing the uh, for oh, the yeah. last for the last hour your insights, your knowledge on paid media. I'm blowing our um, mind. Every time that you Honestly. and me talk, I, 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 I'm familiar with your space um, enough to be dangerous. But uh, right. I, every time that we've, the last time and this time we've talked, I've learned something new. So um, I hope that our listeners have as well. And I know the last podcast that we did, we actually had a couple people that asked questions, which is what went into today's part two. Yeah. Um, so if you guys did listen all the way through this and you made it to this far, congratulations. Um, you have questions. Let me know. Show notes, comments, Slack. I don't, I don't care. However you want to do it. Um, we can come up with a part three. And then if you want to get a hold of Mary, 
How do we do that? Yeah. So um, you can reach us on our website, mosaic.agency forward slash contact. That actually comes directly to my email. And then uh, follow me on LinkedIn, Marianne Pruitt. And I'm there and I love, I love to have the conversation. If you ever have questions about paid media or you just want to pick somebody's brain or our, our team's brain, I always offer to anybody that hears on a podcast or on an interview, happy to have a conversation. And you're, uh, I'll, I'll make sure that your LinkedIn is in the, uh, is in the show notes. So if you guys are looking for that, there's going to be a link there. Uh, check the show notes or the YouTube channel description. You guys will find that down below. So awesome. again, thank you for joining us on the Brews and Business podcast. Uh, hang out for a second and then I'll tell you officially bye. (laughs) Thanks guys. Thank you.